What are the skills required to be a great restaurant manager, to be a great leader? We will go deep into those skills. We will discuss each and every one of them and we will tell you how to acquire them. Coming up. Green salad with French dressing. Thank you very much. control and perform all those tasks you need a lot of skills as a restaurant manager and the most important thing probably is communication believe it or not being able to communicate with your waiters with your kitchen chef and stuff with your boss if you're working in a hotel your restaurant your hotel manager or F&B manager with your owner if you're just working in a normal thing normal restaurant with your vendors I mean, there are a lot of communication going on. So you have to really be a very good communicator. Um, and sometimes communication, it doesn't mean just talking, okay? Communication also means listening. And sometimes even listening is more important than, than talking, all right? Uh, you go to the guest, instead of talking, 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 it's three times more important to let them talk to you and you just listen carefully and nicking with your head and yes i understand yes absolutely this is three times more important you just go there and, and say some kind words all right so communication top priority for you to learn the communication skills and never forget communication doesn't mean only talking it means also listening And now we come to the most funny part that so many people talk about and not many people explain. You need leadership skills, all right? And how many times you heard somebody talking about leadership skills? Right? Millions of times. It's leadership skills. You need leadership skills. You need leadership skills to this, do this, that, that. Yes, of course. If you want to become a leader as a restaurant manager to your team, you have to have leadership skills, but please tell me what are those leadership skills and explain to me what should I do to acquire those skills. So that's what I'm going to do right now. We're going to just talk about leadership skills and, and we are going to discuss the most important things. Again, I cannot discuss all of them, but, uh, but it, mo the ones that we're not discussing, they are pretty much clear. Uh, so let's start now. Empathy. You know, this is, a leader without empathy is a is an asshole. Stupidly, uh, sorry about that, but I mean, is an asshole. So empathy is very important, and I think everybody knows what empathy means. So I don't need to explain. Patience. Can you imagine a leader without patience? You're gonna lose your patience. You're gonna lose your temper. You're gonna freak out, and you're gonna embarrass yourself in front of your guests, in front of your customers, uh, in front of your uh, workers, employee. It's not happening. So patience is really, really important um, to have as a, as a leader. Decisiveness. <laughs> How many times you guys sit on one problem and you cannot make a decision which way to go, what to do, you know? As a restaurant managers, you have 
no time and no right to waste a second on making decisions. You have to make a decision on a split second because our environment is stressful, it's busy, and if you are wasting your time on this problem, solving this problem, making this decision, the line from next decision is gonna be till the end of the year. You're not gonna never make it. So decisiveness is very important. Now, effective decision making needs researching, needs evaluation, you know, problem solving skills, and so on, so on, goal settings. But we don't have this time in the restaurant. All right. So what's gonna help you here is your experience in your knowledge all right but of course some other things that, that you have to acquire by reading by listening by following great leader me personally i was extremely lucky to work with some amazing managers in my life amazing people with great great leadership skills with with a lot of experience themselves and i was able to learn from those people and that's how i slowly slowly step by step became uh, the person that i am right now but uh yes decisiveness is very important it takes a lot of experience and a lot of courage to take a quick decision and and deal with it because a lot of times that's going to be not the perfect decision maybe it's going to be a very wrong decision but uh, hey we don't have time in a restaurant in rush hours to uh, mew about What's going to happen if I do this and what's going to happen if I do that? You got to be a decisive person. Problem solving. You cannot imagine how important that is, guys. Because there are so many problems in the restaurant every single day. One after another after another. But the most important thing to know is that there is always, always a solution to a problem. And even there is always a multiple solution to a problem. Uh, I did a couple of video interviews with uh, my f and director, Diego Cuisine. And um, one of the things that I really appreciate about him, that he never loses his cool. And no matter how difficult the situation is, he just remains very calm and saying, Ned, we're going to find a solution. There is always a solution to the problem. <laughs> hey, it was great, you know. And, and not that I just like, you know, because I am really pissed at something that somebody made a mistake and there is no chance. For example, there is no more tables in the restaurant. I mean, we are completely packed. And the reservation desk sent me another reservation, very important guest. We cannot uh, tell him no, and you have to find a table. I don't have a table. Should I kick somebody else out of the restaurant? How is that possible? I mean, it's not possible. You cannot kick nobody out of the restaurant because somebody just made a late reservation and you cannot say no. And yeah, Diego will say again, don't worry, Ned, we'll find a solution. There is a solution for everything. And we always find a solution, guys. And you're going to always find a solution. So do not panic. Do not get pissed off like sometimes I do. And, uh, and there's a solution. But you have to work on your problem-solving skills. And the most important thing is to keep your poise, you know, and just focus on the subject, focus on the problem, solve it and move on. Ability to listen. Like I said, communication is not only talking. Communication is also listening. To be able to listen, you have to have the patience, you have to have the empathy, you know, you have to understand that all those skills are actually interconnected. You know, you cannot have ability to listen if you don't have empathy toward your staff or to a guest and you don't have the patience. You know, unpatient people, they don't listen nothing. They just want to turn around and walk away or just want to talk over you and, and, and just, they don't have patience. So ability to listen, one of the important things in your job, you just listen to your guests, you listen to your, your employees, and that brings them really a peace of mind that they are that they are hurt, you know. If there's a problem or if there's whatever it is, just listen to somebody makes them feel better. Ability to explain. 
we already talked about teaching people, you know, you have to be able to explain very well the situations, especially when it's a rush hour, when it's a complication, and, and you have to be right on top of it and really explain the situation like so that it's, dis it's dissolved, not just you say something stupid and it just explodes, all right? So um, work on your communication skills, you know, teaching, explaining, uh, and like I said, also with the problem solving, the most important thing is to teach yourself to remain calm so your brain can work um, in a normal environment. And, uh, not the adrenaline is rushing to your head and your brain just freaking out. I mean, you're not gonna be a solar problem. You're not gonna be able to listen. You're not gonna be able to explain nothing because just you lost your cool, you lost your poise. Um, all those things, you know, the problem solving, the ability to listen, the ability to explain, those things are connected to your, um, you know, experience, to your uh, knowledge, but also to your brain function. Um, one of the great people that, that can teach you those kind of things is Jim Quick. You go and search for Jim Quick uh, learnings and you can learn a lot from this guy. He is the most amazing person who can explain to you how the brain works and who can teach you uh, how to communicate, how to learn fast and so on, so on, so on. It's amazing. So uh, Jim Quick is the name. Another skill, integrity. No? Now, a lot of people think that integrity is just being honest, but uh, it's not just that. It's so many little things. Um, integrity. We all search for people with integrity in our business because we want people that we can depend on, you know, like you hire someone, you know, with the interview, he's a great uh, talker, he's a great communicator, he has the skills and he has the knowledge and all those kind of things. But during this time that he's telling you all the right things, he has in mind that, you know what, I have uh, th three days later, I have this interview and, um, you know, I will take this job, but uh, if, if I succeed on the interview three days later, just gonna quit here and I will go there and something like that. So um, people with integrity is what builds your team, you know? The spoil of your team is, is, is the people with integrity. So very important thing, especially as a manager, because you lead your team and if you have no integrity, they, they will lose also integrity no there will be no loyalty there will be no nothing all right so work on that the next skill mentoring now this is also connected to patience also connected to um, ability to communicate ability to listen mentoring is not just teaching people how to do things but you know to help them grow into a leader you know, you take a little kid in your in your restaurant and he just starts right now. He's scared. He doesn't have the knowledge. He has no skills, but he's going to learn. And you, you know, creating an environment where he can really perform, start feeling well, start learning new skills and start learning new uh, of knowledge, you know, accumulating knowledge and things like that. But not just that, you teach them also how to accumulate those skills leadership skills so you grow them into a leader themselves you know this is what mentoring you and mentoring doesn't mean you just go and tell uh, hey you don't do this like that you do it like that all right this is teaching you can teach people but mentoring means that you help them grow into a really good person into a really special leader just like you you know so they can get your place in, in a few years. Um, reliability, I mean integrity, reliability, like I said, those, those skills are interconnected. People want to rely on you, you know? 
Uh, people uh, want to be able to trust you. You know, when a waiter says, you know, I need the day off uh, on Friday because my mom has a birthday and I just really want to uh, do something special for her. And you say, yeah, of course, man, no problem. But there comes Monday and um, you say, you know what? I need you on the phone, man. I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, it's busy and uh, you got to be here. You got to be working. And, and not just that. I just give you an example. But, but this is what makes and breaks a team, uh, just like integrity, uh, important skill. And dependability, you know, reliability, dependability, integrity, uh, being dependable leader means that people can trust you, you know, and rely on you. Just like, like, you know, reliability, dependability is the same, the same little skill, just a little bit tweaking, but it's very important because if you're not trustworthy, you will never create a team, never create a team that you can rely on. You know, because people cannot rely on you, they will never have the loyalty, uh, the integrity to, to, to carry your, when you need help, when you have made a mistake, they're not going to stand up for you, they're not going to stand behind you to, to support you, you know, that's how it is, that's how life works, not just in the restaurant, everywhere else. Positive attitude. A lot of people mistaking the positive attitude with uh, just putting a big smile and say, it doesn't matter, everything's gonna be okay, everything's gonna be all right, not to worry, nothing to worry, everything's gonna be okay. That's, that's not positive attitude, that's stupidity. Now, positive attitude is, is just beaming positivity to your team, you know, like, like they, they're scared or they're stressed or whatever and they see you and you and they and they immediately calm down because they know that they can rely on you and you're gonna come right now and you're gonna solve the problem and everything's gonna be all right that's what positivity means you know you as a leader you have the skills you have the knowledge you have the experience everybody can rely on you because they don't have all those skills. They don't have all that knowledge. So you walk around. Of course, you have the smile because without a smile, what kind of positivity is that? But but you bring also the calmness. You bring also the the organization, the structure, the the, the knowledge, and uh, and and that's what positivity means. So do not mistake positivity with some prick going around and, and, and telling you, don't worry about it, man, everything's going to be all right. Ah, and listen, everybody can be positive when everything goes nice and smooth. But you have to focus on positivity when, you know, the shit hit the fan. Then, you know, you have to show your leadership skills, you know, and your positive character and, and, and bring the calmness and solve the problem and keep everybody calm and you know keep everybody running so you gotta distinguish that you know it's easy to be positive when everything is nice and calm and smooth try to be positive when it's really stressful when it's peak hours when there's a big line outside the restaurant when somebody has screwed up something and there's a problem with the guests and there's a problem with the kitchen, then a true leader show the course. And now we're gonna go really quickly through some of the skill, uh, you know, some of the skills uh, because um, we cannot make this uh, five-hour video. Great self-control. We already talked about it. This is what I just told you. You know, you control yourself and you allow your brain to work in a normal environment. If you let the adrenaline rush through your head, your brain's gonna explode. You're not gonna be able to make a decision. You're not gonna be able to remain calm. You're not gonna be able to do nothing. Risk taking, all right? Decisiveness is also connected with the risk taking. Because like I said, to make a right decision, you need analysis, you need research, you need knowledge, you need whatever, but in this, business we don't have the time we don't have this all those kind of things so 
making a quick decision is connected with the risk taking, you know? It's risky, you know, when you make a decision on a split second without having all the data, you're taking a risk, but it's part of the job. You take the risk and you live with it. If you have made a mistake, you have to know how to handle that and that's it, move on. Flexibility, you know, you gotta be flexible. Every, every job description in, uh, in, uh, in the hospitality industry, it doesn't matter if it's a waiter, if it's a busboy, if it's a dishwasher, if it's a whatever it is, it, they ask you, you have to be flexible. So if you are now a restaurant manager, and I hope that you have experience starting from a busboy or whatever, you know already that flexible is a very important skill and you have to remain flexible. Now that you are a boss in the restaurant, doesn't mean that you have to be like an elephant and, uh, and just sitting on your place and not moving around and being not flexible, not happening. Creativity. I mean, this is, this is part of the job, you know, you have to be able to create uh, stuff, create atmosphere. I mean, you have a celebration on table five. Yeah, make sure you create something nice for those people. Not just setting up the table nice with some fireworks and blah, 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 balloons and so on and so, but you can also create some special uh, offer for them, you know, like, like cocktails or like uh, giving them uh, champagne, uh, making them feel happy and stuff like that. This is also creativity, you know, your brain never stops thinking how to make the guests more positive, how to make the guest experience uh, more pleasant. Team building. Uh, this is a, a complex skill, you know, team building, that means that you have the integrity, reliability, this, all those little things that, that come to trust, you know, so people can start trusting you, people can rely on you, and then of course you can rely on them and you can trust them to do their job properly, and that's what brings the team up, and that's why it's so important to hire new people that maybe they don't have the skills right now and the knowledge but you see in them you know integrity you see reliability and that's more important than having the knowledge and the skills because you can teach knowledge you can teach skills but you cannot teach integrity okay maybe you can also integrate some people that have no integrity into the team because of the culture but it's very dangerous because once you hire people like no integrity more probably they will break the culture they will break this atmosphere of integrity in your team then just you will be able to integrate them ability to inspire you know if you want to lead your people you have to inspire them man you know just tell them listen you can become a great leader. You can become a great restaurant waiter right now and then in the future a great leader. But by learning, I see it in you. You know, just give them the inspiration that they, 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 they need to learn, to work hard, you know, to perform and to want to grow. Ability to learn fast. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Everybody has to be able to learn fast if they want to grow and uh, ability to work hard. Listen guys, working hard is always paying off. So many times, you cannot imagine how many times I have co-workers coming to me, uh, man, why are you working so hard? Why am I working so hard? Because I don't want no one to come to me and tell me, hey, listen man, you're cheating, you know, you're a cheat. You're not working as hard as you should. I just cannot live with that. I don't want to give a chance to anybody, no manager, no coworker, no guest, to have a chance to tell me that I'm not doing my job the best way possible. And that's why I work hard. And that's why I have my you know, high self-esteem, my ego, that, that nobody can tell me nothing because I'm doing my job the best way I can, the best way possible. All right, and those are the leadership skills. Uh, now we just keep going with the skills because this is not all that you need to have as a, as a restaurant manager. All those skills that we discussed now, until now, were the leadership skills. The first one we discussed was the communication skills. 
you know then we discuss the leadership skills and now we go to the next and that's attention to details i mean do you pay attention to details you have to as a manager like i said if you leave your waiters no matter how good they are no matter what they take the team whatever whatever but once you work 12 hours my friend six days in a row you are tired as hell you're looking for shortcuts you don't care about no restaurant manager no guests no nothing you want to go home you're pissed you so you start skipping you know but as a restaurant manager you just cannot allow that to a certain degree of course i allow it also i understand you know if i can skip if i can allow the the waiters to skip one step i would do that you know once i see that we everybody's tired and everybody's just going out of their mind yes of course if i can allow that if i can leave it for tomorrow i will leave it for tomorrow you know after 12 hour shift or 15 hour shift or whatever uh but uh as a, as a manager, you have to pay attention to detail. Uh, setting up the restaurant, you know, so many times the waiters just throw the plates, throw the silverware, throw the glasses, uh, not paying attention if there are some chips on the on the rim of the glass, not paying attention if there are some fingerprints on the silverware, and you cannot just let that go because if you leave your restaurant, you know, messy for your guests that come in there you're just not doing your job properly and if i'm an owner of the restaurant i would just fire it and this is important so no matter how tired you are you may allow your waiters to skip a step but not because you want to go home because you understand how bad they feel right now and you can afford to leave this for tomorrow for example you know but you do not skip the steps you have to be really on top of everything you have to pay attention to details uh, and make sure that everything that needs to be done is done properly conflict management and when we're talking about conflict management we're not talking just about guest complaint handling because you're gonna have conflict uh, with your staff you're gonna have conflict with your chef you're gonna have conflict with your boss you're gonna have conflicts between the two staff members and you have to solve that because you are the authority in the restaurant you know no matter how much you hate that you have to jump in and say you know what this this and this green salad with french dressing thank you very much yes.